I was thinking about this with the interaction of the centers and whose centers are defined and undefined in the room is that Mm -hmm. it could also help you in larger gatherings, particularly if you find yourself feeling a certain way or acting in a certain way to, to come back into terms with knowing what your definition is, where you're open and Mm -hmm. where you're not. Human design reveals who you are energetically and who you came here to be. I'm Dana, human design specialist. And I'm Haley, the human design newbie. Listen in as we explore how leaning into your authentic self is your ultimate path to success. Welcome to the Human Design High podcast. Let's get into it. Hi, Haley. How you doing? Hi. I am cold. (laughs) You are cold. Yeah, we started to have a little convo. And they said, oh, well, we'll just hit record and start having the convo because Mm -hmm. you're wearing a sweater and I'm wearing a sleeveless shirt. (laughs) Something wrong here. I know. But anyways, um, yeah, we're in different spaces, aren't we? A little bit. I mean, what were you just saying about you were cold all day? Oh, yeah, I've been cold all day at work, so I had my blanket over me Mm -hmm. in like a long sleeve shirt and my blanket all day at my desk. And I was like, maybe I shouldn't record in that. (laughs) So I put on my sweater with all these sheep and the little black sheep, the one black sheep. (laughs) And I love the sweater. And I was saying, you know, I've seen people... However they want to be on camera. I I mean, maybe <laughs> younger generations, more comfortable. I think older generations, such as myself, I don't like saying I'm the older generation sometimes, but in this case, it's true. We're a little less likely to, you know, let it all hang out because <laughs> we'll kind of be touching on some conditioning stuff in this episode today, but that's really a part of it is there's still so much hanging around in our in our cells and our beings of like (laughs) having to present ourselves in a certain way and we're trying to bust through that I was always like I I don't know I'm still of the like belief that I have to be presentable to go out (laughs) and I mean I saw a podcast the other day I won't (laughs) and it's a very popular one of the top podcasts out there and the woman's daughter was on the podcast with her and she was, I don't know, maybe your age could be younger, older. I don't know. I didn't do that much research. But she did, she was doing the whole episode with eye, the masks eye masks under her eyes. And I was just like, I, I don't know. I was kind of conflicted. <laughs> yeah. On the one hand, I'm like, oh, that's brave. And on the other, I'm like, really? You couldn't just take off the eye mask. Like, you had to do it right now. Mm-hmm. It's bad. No, I, I get it. I get what you're saying. Cause I don't, I don't know how I've, I feel conflicted on it too. Cause it's like, you, really? Like, it wasn't like someone jumped out of I a bush know. and was like, surprise, <laughs> we're going to talk on this podcast now. <laughs> kind of in their own home, I think. So I'm pretty sure they knew it was happening. Yeah. But it's a little um, odd. Anyways, we started talking about other little things and I was enjoying my drink. I'm just proud of it. That's why I said, let's, yes. I made myself my, what are you drinking? I made myself my own oat milk chai tea Mm. because I have this Starbucks gift card. You know, there's a Starbucks in the street. I don't Mm -hmm. particularly like Starbucks, Mm -hmm. but the things I like at Starbucks isn't their coffee. (laughs) It's like (laughs) one thing that I really like is essentially a milkshake. And I'm like, well, I can't, can't drink those all the time. Although I'd really like, it's a, (laughs) what is it? It's the caramel crunch frappuccino. Or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. So I have this gift card. And uh, so I got a, they have a pumpkin spice chai tea latte. And I figured, Mm -hmm. well, it couldn't be that bad because, you know, chai, pumpkin, a lot of like. And it was really good. And way overpriced. So I like to do things like this now and then. And like, oh, I'll create my own. And I remembered I had all these Kirkland's. What is that? Costco. (laughs) I have all these oat milk <laughs> containers. Anyways, mm-hmm. now I'm just rambling. What? I don't know. It's like you're going to say uh-huh. something expensive. Uh, expensive? Expensive? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to say something expensive. Tell me something expensive. 
<laughs> exciting, I guess is the word. Exciting. I like that new phrase. <laughs> Tell me something expensive. <laughs> Could be good or bad. I don't know. Could be like, well, this, yeah. this is going to hurt. It's going to be a little expensive. <laughs> I have something very expensive to tell you. <laughs> that would not be a good way to start a conversation. <laughs> no. I'll be like, oh God, I don't hear that. <sighs> so, anyways, I've been doing some thinking it about, you know, what could be helpful here for mm -hmm. everybody out there as we move into fall. Very exciting. We got our pumpkin spice chai lattes and our, our sweaters mm -hmm. on. <laughs> and, um, I love this time of year. I really do love this time of year. I'm, I'm I just, because mm -hmm. maybe it's because my birthday's next month and I'm not just that, <laughs> but maybe it's because I have a affinity for this time of year. Maybe because it's the time of year when I came into this world. I don't know. Do you have an affinity for February? <laughs> What's your favorite time of year? Uh, Oh, that's so hard because every time of year it has its own things that I love mm. about it. But I think I do, as much as I love like the warmth of summer, I think I do really love like fall and winter. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of that is just because of like the holidays and how fun everything is. And mm -hmm. But yeah, I like them all though. They're yeah. all good. They're all like, good. I've always liked fall. Like I said, it's been kind of, I mean, I grew up somewhere where there was a noticeable change in the season. season and it's not so much here. What we notice the most <laughs> usually is uh, the level of tourists <laughs> drops off dramatically. Mm -hmm. But you're like, oh, it must be fall yeah, now. <laughs> not even that so much anymore. It just started to get a little bit, but you know, it's 80 some degrees today. And, mm -hmm. but I'm looking out the window right now, my giant tree out in my front yard, still green, but I'm noticing lots of leaves on the on the ground now too. But we, uh, when we took Bailey out last night for her to go to the bathroom before bed, mm -hmm. Presley looked at the weather and it was like, I think mid fifties here at nine o'clock. Mm -hmm. And then he looked in Charleston and it was like, 73 at 11 o'clock mm -hmm. yeah so it's like, mm. we have been feeling some of the less humid which is is nice but it is i mean september is always i mean now i guess it's getting to be mid-september to mid-october is always kind of my favorite time at the beach when you can enjoy going to the beach so your dad and i went to the beach last weekend and it's mm -hmm. not as hot the water was a little cool but i got mm -hmm. used to it but it's just I don't know, like you said, as we move into these, because we got off track here, as we move into these <laughs> months at the end of the year, there is a lot, especially here in the United States, mostly because we have the uh, Thanksgiving, which, mm -hmm. you know, love it or leave it. It is what it is. People have more issues with it this day, but you know, I'm never really feel like I'm celebrating <laughs> Christopher Columbus. I'm really just celebrating getting together with her family and enjoying mm -hmm some some fun time is that still happening are you guys coming back this way? i think so presley hasn't talked to his family they're on a cruise right now oh, so nice Ooh. he hasn't talked well, to i'm sure family. they won't be listening to this before, <laughs> before he talks to him. i'm sure presley's no. family's not on the top of our subscribers list <laughs> But as we move towards this time of year, we are more likely to be seeing uh, family. So mm -hmm. I feel like there is more thought around relationships and especially uh, how to navigate them better. Like, especially if mm -hmm. you are in a space where it stresses you out to be around family, mm -hmm. it maybe something you don't look forward I thought it might be helpful if as I was looking over what we've talked about before and everything I the things I really love talking about I love talking about the profiles and the lines those things I love that and I love mm -hmm. um, talking about the centers and the different energy centers because the mm -hmm. they in particular can give you so much information about not only your own behaviors, but other people's behaviors, and then combining that, what happens in the room when your design is with someone else's design. And mm -hmm. you can look at it in two different ways. 
you can look at it in the the no relationships let's say like I have gone and run everybody's chart that I can think of that <laughs> I'm normally around <laughs> mm-hmm. and I suspect uh, if you're listening to this, you may be guilty of it as well. Somebody out there who's <laughs> like, once you start seeing some resonance with your own design, you're like, I want to know everybody's design. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> Tell me everything. Excuse me. Why? It's a little frothy. I even frothed it a little bit. I don't want to get a little milk. I could it. hear that. The froth? <laughs> could hear you slurping the frosty. The not frosty. frosting the frosty. <laughs> The froth. I do not have. There's no ice cream. There's no cream. Let's try to be healthy. This is oat milk. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, oh my. Oh God, what was I just saying? It's on a roll there. Running everyone's charts. Oh yeah, running everyone's charts. Um, unless you're Haley, you just let me do it for you. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever? Except for the one last week, the blind. <laughs> I did. I, did you try running the chart or did you just give me the... No, I ran. I ran his chart for the mm-hmm. the other episode, but that's the only one I've ever run. That's okay. <laughs> that's all right. I mean, let's let's be fair here. I know I, I put the pressure on you, but to be fair, we are talking about you are the, in this equation, the, uh, the novice, the lay person, the person that doesn't need to like mm-hmm. know everything. Or to be able to transmit everything back to someone, but you are learning it, I suppose, for yourself. And mm-hmm. I know that mm-hmm. it's been helpful. And so I so I could say you can look at it in the regards of the people that you know and the people in your family and who you con- come in contact with. Because quite often you can, you know, their birth information. You'll be able to get it pretty easily. It's not so weird to you know, <laughs> look into people's <laughs> birth times with your family. It's a little mm-hmm. weirder as it spreads out. But <laughs> but also I, kept, I was thinking about this with the interaction of the centers and whose centers are defined and undefined in the room is that mm-hmm. it could also help you in larger gatherings, particularly if you find yourself feeling a certain way or acting in a certain way to to come back into terms with knowing what your definition is where you're open and Mm -hmm. where you're not so you can navigate the space a little bit better and knowing what's yours and what's not yeah but for the most part since we're from good oh sorry i always feel like you're i was just gonna say it's i was just gonna say it's very helpful information to know it is because it take it it helps you not take things so personally. I mean the the mm. the triggering is definitely le- excuse me in life for me. Have you had any of that mm-hmm. experience for yourself? I think it's more of just being able to recognize because like I can feel when someone else his emotions are kind of off, so that it's easier for me to be able to recognize. And, and not take things so personally. Like there's been times where I know that Presley's like stressed at work Mm -hmm. and he may take it out on me. And I, I will say this, don't take this out on me. I know it's not me. Mm -hmm. So I am able to recognize like I, and I don't take it as personal because I'm like, this isn't about me. That's good. And that's, and so that's what we're going to kind of dive in here is, you know, it's, it's simply looking at the centers again. And I know we've explained it before and we've gone through them. However, if we look at what's actually happening when defined and undefined meet, so to speak. So let's take it from the top. What we know about the energy centers. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have nine of them. Mm -hmm. Yes. They are the part of the chart that, uh, is referencing the the chakra system let's say and it, it shows us you know the major energy processing centers in the body the uh, mm-hmm. energetic body that is although they do correlate to physical areas of the body they in the human design chart when you're looking at your body graph mm-hmm. you will see colored in and not colored in and the represents right. what Haley come into the conversation whether it is whether it is defined which is filled in or undefined which is not filled in colored in or white on the 
representative yeah. body graph. And mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. where it's colored in, yes, we call that defined. And the defined areas are your consistent um, <clears throat> energy signatures, let's say. So mm -hmm. that is defined by the gates that you have activated in your chart. And so when we say defined, we say consistent, stable energy that you have. And the way it in, especially in this context, this conversation, the way I like to see it also is it is the energy broadcasting from you at all times. Mm -hmm. It is always there. It's reliable. It, it can fluctuate how you express it, I, I guess, but mm -hmm. really on the energetic level that even if you're not aware of what the energy is, you're still bringing that energy into the room with you. And so mm -hmm. on the other side, <clears throat> of that is the undefined centers that show up as white and that means there's less consistent uh experience of those energy themes and mm -hmm. you uh will be affected in your openness where other people are defined so this is just kind of like the mechanics at its bare bones of the system. The mechanics is mm -hmm. there's places where you're going to be broadcasting and you're going to be receiving. It's just as simple mm -hmm. as that. And so what happens is the areas where we are receiving our open areas, our undefined areas, mm -hmm. what happens when we are in contact with that defined energy so when you come in contact with the defined energy, you're pulling me in again. I just <laughs> so wanted to have a drink. Are... <laughs> <laughs> so you're pulling that energy, you're bringing that in and basically amplifying it and broadcasting it back out. It's like a, a, a satellite yeah. radar dish. Yeah, it's, a, it's an amplification of the energy. And so what happens because of that, <clears throat> we have this base challenge all of us have this challenge in life where well, except for reflectors because they're open in all their centers but they do have defined gates but mm -hmm. <clears throat> for the rest of the 99 percent of them we have this situation where we we are are defined and defined in a certain way that is our solid our energy Mm -hmm. But we're always kind of reacting out of where we're not defined because of that amplification of energy. And so mm -hmm. that's why they talk about the not self behavior so much in the undefined centers because of that ampl amplification of the energy. Mm -hmm. However, there's a reason right. for that. It, the reason is <clears throat> we are here to, as you say, as we take it in and amplify it, what we're really doing is we're experiencing and we're in a way processing that energy on an energetic level. It's not a mental thing. We're not like making sense of it necessarily, <laughs> but we're mm -hmm. experiencing what that is like. And since we don't have a consistent mm -hmm. experience of that in our openness, it helps us inform how other people experience these energies. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's really important point as well because the, the I think the whole uh, what's the whole framework shows us how there is no real way for us to be separate you know it's like mm -mm. we it's not possible it's not possible we are all <laughs> going to be connected we're going to be drawn to each other we're going to be mm -hmm. um, influenced by each other we're going to learn from each other, all these things. And so as I think this could be one of the most helpful things in learning about human design, besides knowing your own you know, type is seeing dynamics in the room and helping improve communication amongst just, you know, couples or families or, you know, bigger friends or I don't know, governments, countries, all of it, <laughs> the whole world, the whole world. Let's go big here. Yeah. And we're just in the beginning stages here of understanding this. You know, you think about the the tiniest micro millisecond of time that human design has been on this planet and when human beings have 
been mucking things about. <laughs> it's a lot of muck to clean. That is a lot of muck. But, you know, it's got to start somewhere. It started with us. You're learning it. I mean, mm-hmm. you're not going to be an unconditioned person because, you know, you grew up with me and I didn't know all this stuff, but you're learning sooner. And, you know, mm-hmm. one day none of us will have to worry about all this conditioning. We'll have a deep understanding of it, but we got to start something. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's very distracting. They say, <laughs> you should be in front of a window when you're like <laughs> recording the lighting's a little bit better. And I'm so, just, there's never anything happening out in front of my street. I live in a rather, no. but my neighbor's out there mowing the lawn with her dog walking back and forth with her as she mows the lawn, which is really cute. Some other lady just walked by. I've never seen her before. Okay. This is an open head. (laughs) Okay. So let's see. Did I want to touch on anything else about define, undefined? The most important thing we always talk about is if you are undefined, you don't have a definition in the center, doesn't mean you don't have any energy there. It just means that it's inconsistent right. and it's going to be affected by those around you or by transits, planets, moon, all that mm-hmm. stuff. Much, much more variable. Right. It's just, um, like I said, it shows that none of us are separate. And then if you could think about, which I've had this thought for a while about us, about people and how we all interact is that. And it talks about it in the human, or Ra would talk about it a lot, that we're just like these cells in the body. And some people don't like to hear. I think, you know, scientists have really shown us that as far out as you can expand things in the universe, it looks the same as as small as you can get in the mm. universe of the smallest atom, the everything. It, it all kind of mm-hmm. has the same, pro, you know, structure let's say and Mm so I always you know just think it's very interesting to look at us when you can see in your body graph and in your design what it is your cell what you are programmed to activate or what you're programmed to receive you know it's just I don't know okay maybe I'm getting a little out there for people but you don't have to diminish your interests (laughs) oh it's my little freaky genius to freaks getting a little like, oh, they didn't ask you that. <laughs> Don't worry about it. This that. is your space to speak. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So <clears throat> the head center, of course, is at the top of the body graph. It's the top triangle. Um, the center for ideas, inspiration. It's the interface between pretty much us, your body, and divine. Source, Gus. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Interface between us. <laughs> Source. Gus. Gus. Yes. God. Universe. Source. Between us and Gus. Us and Gus. <laughs> and so the the gates there deal with logic, with abstract thinking, with knowingness. Okay. It's a, if you have a defined head center, then you are considered a inspirational force on the planet. There's always, um, you're always kind of radiating, radiating out into the world inspiration, whether you're aware of it or not. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a consistent source of inspiration and questioning, always asking questions. And like I said, this may not even be energy that you are aware of all the time because it's, Mm -hmm. it's just on fuel. It just feels that way. Right. It's less, It can be less recognizable because it is just so familiar. Very true. Yes. Which again, which is what we were talking about, that dynamic of like feeling that when we're undefined, that we're so much more, but we're not. Okay. Mm -hmm. You may find that as a person with a defined head center, like I said, you're always thinking, asking questions and kind of are uncomfortable if there aren't answers there for sure because you know uh, our logical minds the human mind always is looking for answers but it can't provide answers it can only provide more (laughs) questions so if you have an open head center it means you have an inconsistent way of receiving information or inspiration and and when they come across something they find inspiring they can amplify it you know these people have you know lots of inspiration there they're here to learn about what's inspiring and who is inspiring 
And <clears throat> when you have an open head center, it's pretty easy to feel inspired all the time. Mm -hmm. And not only do you feel inspired, you often feel pressure to act on this inspiration. Now, when it comes to the population, 70% of the population mm -hmm. is undefined. Okay. Oh, really? Mm, yeah. So if you have a defined head center, you're more in the minority. Most of us have oh. undefined head centers. <laughs> As I said, there's this tendency because there's this, it's a pressure center. It's not a motor. Mm -hmm. It just has this pressure on it all the time of uh, figuring out what's inspiring or not, you know, if it's undefined. And so they might receive information and... I meant to say inspiration. They may receive inspiration and then feel this need to act on it because of that pressure. And so what you have is a lot of people wandering around, always trying to act on inspiration that, you know, they're kind of always shifting and changing. And, you know, this is the idea. You, you've seen mm -hmm. it in me. I mean, I'm like, oh, this is interesting. <laughs> oh, this is interesting. Oh, maybe I should do this. Maybe I should be like this. Or maybe I should do this with a podcast. Or maybe I should think about changing how everything let you like just wherever the wind blows uh -huh. I'm, I'm likely to to pick and then i'm usually like why don't you just do one thing <laughs> i don't know i i've got to figure out what's inspiring and what's not <laughs> and as i said one caveat to this conversation we should mention i have three undefined centers but they're all completely open with no activations mm -hmm. What I am talking about here, I'm talking about from other people's experiences because it's going to play out a little bit differently. If it's completely open head center now mm -hmm. and you have a gate activation, it's going to pretty much the inspiration you receive is going to try to be filtered through those either that logical thinking or that abstract thinking or that knowingness, those three gates. Mm -hmm. If you don't, <clears throat> such as myself, Everything seems inspiring. Don't know really. I have no context what to judge it against. As you said, I am mm -hmm. kind of like squirrel, you know, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. It's, and it used to be something that really haunted me with that whole shiny object syndrome. You know, I was just constantly, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. And so when you look at, you know, you've got this inspiring force and this force looking to be inspired, what happens when these two are in the room, as you can mm -hmm. imagine, that defined head is like depositing or putting questions uh, into an undefined person's head. That sounds very like intrusive. <laughs> <laughs> it's not uh -huh. mind control, but it is literally, let's look at it this way. Go ahead. You have the perfect example. I do. So whenever, well, we've talked about it before. Whenever me, Nancy, uh, Dan, mm -hmm. uh, is Presley defined head? Yeah. You guys all are. Whenever. Well, well yeah. Let, and then you with your. Okay. Well, we'll, you we'll wanna... talk about that. But a simplest thing is, say, just the two of us in a room. Because you are defined head. Yes. Heavily defined mm -hmm. head. All three gates activated. <laughs> one channel. Mm -hmm. And it may be that. I will start if we're sitting next to each other. We don't talk. Mm -hmm. We don't. I mean, when we're in person together, we don't actually talk a lot. <laughs> we do, but we don't. You know, it's like mm -hmm. there's a. It's interesting because I think about that after you leave because I'm always excited to see you. But then when we're around each other, it's just like, yeah, I talk, but I don't know. I. I it's more of a group dynamic, I think. But so yeah. what happens is I start to think like. Oh, we'll start to get hungry or something. And like, what's, what do we want to do for lunch? And I'll, <laughs> I'll be like, I don't know. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? And then I'll ask you, cause you're the projector. I can ask you the open-ended question. <laughs> yes, no question. And then you'd be like, I don't know. I was kind of thinking... I don't know. Mulan was it? I was so it's like Japanese. I was kind of thinking Japanese. Like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, that's what I was thinking too. <laughs> but really, I wasn't. <laughs> I mean, I was, but I wasn't. You know, because right. You know, 
it was really more strongly a feeling, I think, of your head. I couldn't tell you what I wanted, but once, you know, you mm-hmm. started picking up on something, it's like, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. I'll do that. And so, you're like, you know what? Yeah, that is what I want. <laughs> yeah, it's not so much like I'm reaching into your thoughts. And, mm-hmm. and we've been doing this for a while, and I just never noticed it, you know, around <laughs> until, you know. So like you said, when mm-hmm. we are, so the <clears throat> undefined head is picking up on what the defined head is laying down and then mistaking it really for their own thinking in a way. Mm -hmm. Like I said, that depositing. So also it could be, you might have a question or have questioned a simple thing and it's just a natural process for you. And then you're on about your merry way. And I could spend the rest of the day thinking Mm -hmm. about solving that question or problem or riddle or whatever. Mm-hmm. I have started to really notice that if I have some kind of thought or like something that pops into my head mm-hmm. that I like actually will think about first for like a second or whatever, mm-hmm. if I don't write it down, it's, it's going to be gone. Oh, yeah. It's just gone. Mm-hmm. It'll just be gone. Mm-hmm. Things I don't, I don't s- will sit and like focus on something or be like, Oh yeah, I was going to do that. Or I wanted to look at mm-hmm. that. It just is. If I don't like document it in the, moment then Mm -hmm. then it's just gone well yeah and that for someone else to be a (laughs) for someone else right is it is it my defined head that you always try to use to get more focused on your own work or is that a different defined defined center because you'll just come and like sit next to me yeah well and work on something yeah i mean it's the it's the head center because i have a defined as well Mm -hmm. and so it is borrowing that energy. Sometimes it can help me uh, focus. And maybe that's because of your all three gates being activated and mine not having, you know, any It kind of, you know, sometimes it helps me get maybe get, get to work or, you know, there is because, I mean, you can help me focus in a way sometimes. Well, honestly, I'll be I'll be honest. Sometimes. I'm not sure that's the case. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's you just want to sit maybe next it's to me. more. I just want to sit next to you. Maybe it's <laughs> more the defined rude, but yeah, maybe it's it's certainly. Let's put it this way: you can help me. Oh, like right now, you can help me think of things in different ways. Like I'm going to, I I feel more focused around you. I think because of your design and the way that you look at things and the way that information comes to you a question like you have you do have really good questions you know because sometimes you you. can if I start talking to you about something you have a way of helping me like kind of focus my thoughts and give it more of a direction Mm -hmm. that makes sense are struggling right now that's for sure (laughs) so where this can really be important in relationship is especially let's say with your kids or something if you are a parent with a defined head and your child has an undefined head you may you may feel like that kid's just always after you asking you questions constantly like what's this what's this what's this what's this you know (laughs) because they're picking up a lot of that head energy and it's giving them you know all these ideas and questions and everything and so you know, it's just something to be mindful of. It's not necessarily that they're not trying to annoy the shit out of you or anything like that. They're just (laughs) responding energetically to what you have going on. Okay. So Mm -hmm. if I don't go faster, we'll never get through these. Be another like (laughs) monster episode. It's already too long. Okay. So the Ajna center often closely tied to the uh, head center, obviously Mm -hmm. (laughs) not closely tied to the head center. The functions are very similar. Let's say that. That's what I meant to Mm -hmm. say. (laughs) Because obviously they're very close to each other. (laughs) Okay. So the Ajna Center, like I said, so it's, it's very similar to the energies of the head center, but it's more of Mm -hmm. taking all those ideas, inspirations, they come down through, you know, one of those three center or channels. Mm -hmm. If it's defined, Uh it means you're going, if you're, I should also say, if you're defined in the head, it means you have a defined ashna as well, because there's no other way to do it. However, right. in my case, you could have a defined ed- ajna without a defined head. 
So Mm -hmm. in the population, it's about 50-50 here. Uh, It's about 47% defined, 53% undefined. Okay. Okay. (laughs) And uh, so what that is all about is it's your thought process. It is conceptualization. It's like how you take those ideas. It's kind of like a like a filter, right? Yeah, it it theorizes, it conceptualizes, it does all those things because it's taking either that abstract logic or knowingness and then getting it down mm-hmm. to the throat through those pathways still. And that means that someone with a defined ajna is going to have a certain more fixed way of thinking and seeing things or doing things. Okay. Mm -hmm. So like I said, I do have a defined ajna as through the 4323. So it, uh, defined to the throat i'm here to speak my mind i'm somebody mm-hmm. that can't talk about what's on mm-hmm. my mind when she can figure it out <laughs> not today <laughs> today struggle i i mean if he's a <laughs> completely open head is, is <laughs> challenging my ajna today i'm trying to organize all these thoughts together <laughs> okay so the undefined ajna by contrast is a what they call really open kind of open-minded person they literally are someone Mm -hmm. who can uh see things from uh different viewpoints and they are someone who is not meant to have a fixed mental process they they can mix it up they can do it lots of different ways and a lot of times the the open ajna center the not self behaviors there is someone who is always feeling like they have to have things figured out. They have to be certain about things because there's this, you know, variable field within them that, you know, they may always look like they're or feel like quote unquote, uh, I don't want to say bad, but it's like a flaw of theirs that they uh, either can't make up their mind or they change their mind a lot because literally their minds are mm. changing all the time, depending on who they are right. around and how they are going to be affected. Mm-hmm. And so you're here to, you know, with that open, undefined center, you know, your wisdom is going to come through seeing all the different viewpoints and thinking about things from all different angles and not being stuck in one different way. Whereas, you know, the defined Ajna is someone to hold on to information a little bit easier because they're, they have a more fixed way of processing that information and it's fixed in how it works. Mm -hmm. So when, again, this is very similar to what happens with defined head, undefined head is that when these two come together, a defined Ajna and undefined Ajna, the undefined Ajna can, um, really start adopting the other person's thought patterns or viewpoints as their own without Mm -hmm. even realizing sometimes what they're doing. They're just kind of picking up on that uh, definition. And I I see it in pretty clearly in your, your dad's chart because he is undefined um, head and Ajna. And Mm -hmm. I definitely think that over the years, He's probably picked up on my viewpoints and, and everything else. I mean, we've been together a long time. He's mm-hmm. he's he's certainly developed his own. We don't agree on everything, but I would say that he has changed the way he thinks. He also... He has changed. Mm-hmm. And he also... So he is influenced by those around him, I think. Not that mm-hmm. he doesn't have his own thoughts, but he certainly does. He's way better at saying things like, well... Um, especially if it's a challenging thought or, I mean, I'm good at seeing other viewpoints, but if it's something that really goes against the way I see things, I can get a little Mm -hmm. bit more heated (laughs) about it. (laughs) And he can be a little bit more Mm -hmm. tolerant to see, well, he'll explain to me why he thinks maybe someone thinks a certain way. And I like to see that as my gift as well. But when it comes to thought for you, like belief systems, yeah, I mean, we'll just put it out there. So point being, I am rather <laughs> liberal minded, progressive minded person. And so is your dad and he is and he's gotten that way over mm-hmm. time. Thankfully, as he's matured as an older white guy, he hasn't gone the other direction. But thank 
a, thank us. But a lot of his uh, <laughs> friends and people he knows, or people you're mm-hmm. around, not even just his friends, but you know, it just kind of happens in this area. They have opposing views to a lot of that stuff, and mm-hmm. it's not that he is explaining them to me a lot. A lot of times he is, he listens to them, and he mm-hmm. he wants to hear what they're thinking and why they're thinking that you know he doesn't necessarily do Ooh. anything with it he's just very curious about it and that would be to me a, a, a pretty good um, representation of that open ajna yeah because like i'm thinking if i was in the same situation like listening to someone that has differing viewpoints than i do like strongly mm-hmm. i can't wrap my head around how they could believe what it is they believe yeah Cause I like, I just, I cannot understand it. Well, and, and I think it's because his, it's, it's more fluid for him that he, he's not so tied to how, what it feels for them to be opposed to what he believes. Does that make sense? Like Mm -hmm. for me, if you come up with me with your small minded, excuse me, ideas, (laughs) my defined option is going to want to try and change your mind. Whereas his, because it feels like. That feels like a part of who you are, whereas well, on his side, he has that fluidity to it, so it isn't so tied. In my mind, they're just to wrong. His personality. <laughs> in his mind, he's like, I mean, well, well, yeah. that's the way they think, and I understand that. But yeah, he doesn't, he can literally be in the presence of someone and listen to them say stuff, and it doesn't bother him as much. He doesn't agree with them. He does not agree with them mm-hmm. at all, but he will... Right hear it out and listen to it just to he hears them out yeah yeah so um with that being said there is a pressure of the undefined ajna at times like i said to feel certain and if they're <clears throat> unaware they may be looking for certainty in certain people and it can be another challenge he has is that you know memory he struggles with that now not everybody with an undefined ajna does that but it it can be you know Mm -hmm. when when i see an undefined ajna and somebody i think is somebody that's very like i said open-minded creative in a way because they are able to just use their imaginations in wild and different ways because you know that's just how they are so Anyway, so that's just if they have that, especially if they have the undefined ashram and the undefined head, they're going to feel a lot of mental pressure to to know and to understand and to be certain. But <laughs> so if you think about it, if you have an undefined head or ashram and, and you're walking into a situation, this I think this would be a good time for you to bring up the point that we were making, you started to make earlier about what okay. happens in a yes, group dynamic. <laughs> yeah. So, like I said, it's me, it's uh, Presley, it's Nancy, it's Dan. We all have uh, defined heads and or, or Ajna's and or Yeah, heads. you both, no, so you like, all there's have a defined lot. head and Ajna. All, oh, mm-hmm. we all have it. Mm-hmm. And so you've talked about how we're kind of, <laughs> the one time in the example, but. <laughs> that, that gets, yeah. It gets me every time. Mm-hmm. But basically, you've, t- you've told me before that we can all kind of be in our own space, doing our own thing, not really necessarily concerned. Like, we're all in the same room, but not necessarily concerned with what the other people are thinking. Mm-hmm. And then you've said that you're sitting there, like, literally trying to answer all of these questions in your head. And you're like, I don't even know where these are coming from. Mm-hmm. Stop. I feel an <laughs> enormous amount of pressure. And I love each and every one of you deeply and but at the same time (laughs) I feel so much like concern with what's happening in the group which I used to wonder about that a little bit more because I'm defined emotionally so it's not the emotions I'm necessarily Mm -hmm. impacted by it is the because you're undefined Presley's undefined Eh, Nancy I don't remember she's defined emotionally I can't remember about her husband Dan but it I always, I'm always trying to like, what are we doing? Where are we going? What's going to happen? What's, you know, what are we, how long are we going to do it? Like, I'm always like, I've got so many questions in my head all the time. 
And, you know, your uncle's usually just talking. Your aunt's on her phone. <laughs> your husband is doing both. He's on the phone and he's talking. <laughs> your dad's out in the shed. I don't know. Or he's just standing at one end of the kitchen island and I'm standing at the other. And we're both just like watching and nodding and listening and getting a word in here and there. <laughs> Nian's in the other room so he doesn't care either. Okay. All right, so let's move on. Open throat center. I mean, the throat center. So the throat center is the center of Mm -hmm. communication, manifestation. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's how um, everything comes out. So it's like, it's connected to the Ajna. So it's like, what are we thinking about? It's connected to the G center, which is your identity. It's connected to the emotional center, which is Mm -hmm. your emotions. It's also connected to the will center spleen and the spleen it's it's connected (laughs) so it's is it directly connected to everything except for the sacral the root and the head yes yes okay so yeah root center to get to the throat has to go through either the sacral i mean the spleen or straight up the middle through the sacral and the G center or Mm -hmm. emotional solar plexus that's how the root center energy gets there um and so the uh, throat center, if you have it defined, you have a more consistent way of expressing that energy. And there's also the even more nuanced uh, definition there of whether or not you're defined through a motor. So if you have a defined throat mm-hmm. through a motor, that makes you a manifester or manifesting generator, meaning mm-hmm. that the motorized part of it, meaning that you are someone who does not have to respond, wait to respond in order to speak or to do. You are somebody who has the access to energy to get into motion or to speak when they want to. And the chances are better for them to be heard and received because they do have that uh, energy flow that supports that. Whereas Mm -hmm. you can have a defined throat that's not connected to a motor such as myself, where it is works better in response that defined throat. I have a consistent way of expressing myself. And for me, it's expressing my thoughts. That's the only, I mean, Mm -hmm. I have other gates to find, but that's the, the channel is through the Ajna. And so still it works better if people ask me to speak or I've been invited to speak. And that would be the same for anybody Mm -hmm. with a uh, defined center, throat center without a motor. Now, if you're undefined, that means of course, Mm -hmm really you feel kind of under pressure to speak. So you're going to be feeling that pressure of those around you. And what happens with the open or undefined throat center is again, this is where your wisdom is. You learn how to uh, connect to people uh, because you can become you're energetically wise, knowing what needs to be said when it needs to be said, because you're kind of in touch with the other person more than you're feeling it more. Let me see. How do I put that? I've always said that people that have undefined throats, which let's go back to the, the undefined throats. Our statistics. Mm-hmm. Uh, 20, 28% of the population undefined, 72% defined. So more defined throats. Oh, okay. <laughs> the undefined throat feels that pressure to speak in, in one way. So, It's interesting because they need to be invited to speak. It works better. You can Mm -hmm. speak with an undefined throat, but there's this pressure that like, ah, especially if you're a projector such as yourself, that you're like, Mm -hmm. will anybody ever, ever, ever ask me to speak? (laughs) Because it seems like everybody else has such an easy way of doing things and I want to contribute but it's really the the energetic Mm -hmm. pressure of wanting to contribute. And so it can result in blurting things out or speaking when not asked and then it's not received well. And it's interesting because we (laughs) talked about this last week when we were doing blind reading, uh, which I don't really want to say who it is because what if you listen to this first and then you don't know it? (gasps) But, you know. They'll just have to go listen to the episode. Yeah. (laughs) But it was something I I read that was exactly what you had touched on was this person um, had a hard time with changing their accent for a character. Mm, Yeah. You know, that it was Mm -hmm. a struggle and it was because he did have a defined throat. And 
it says that people with undefined throats, definitely you can pick up easier on accents and mimicry and all that stuff because you can, like I said, at the energetic level, understand what needs to be uh, said and how to say it. Really great speakers, mm-hmm. singers, some of the most talented singers out there um, are undefined throats. You know, they have this way of just connecting with people that defined throats can struggle with a little bit more because they're only speaking from their own perspective. Right. And so when in the room, you know, the defined throats and the undefined throats, um, what was your experience growing up? Cause your dad and I both have defined throats. He's manifesting generator. And your brother has a defined throat as well. <laughs> so I'm the only one left out here? Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so who was always barking out and looking for attention with that undefined throat? Me. We had a saying that you, you, <laughs> there was a saying that you would haley it, mm-hmm. which basically meant that I would repeat whatever someone had just said. And you're all like, yeah, we just said mm-hmm. that. And I'm like, Okay. Or you could see it. I mean, you can see it a lot of times in the room when everybody is, is talking and everybody, you know, I can almost feel it in you. You can see it in you where you're just like bubbling (laughs) and you just have to eventually like get something out. And then you're like in such a hurry to, to get it out, to get to the end of the story or whatever it is that you want to relate to. Uh Uh-huh. 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 And then I just, I get like twisted up in my tongue and I, then I completely just, Mm-hmm. miss the ball like I just completely biff it yeah because I do I have thought I've said this to Ian before I always feel like I'm trying to say something funny before he does because he's so quick on his funny responses yeah. and I want to beat him to he it quite gifted. but then again <laughs> I usually just mess it up and it doesn't land <laughs> <laughs> sure. it doesn't land yeah. It happens. But if you can imagine, though, in a in a group setting or a familial setting, you know, there's the person, especially if they have, you know, feeling the pressure, let's say from the, you know, the what's funny is mine and Ian's definition comes through that 4323. Your dad is, a, mm-hmm. you know, it's the 3420, but to the sacral. But, you know, that is going to be the dominant energy in the room is that mm-hmm. knowingness thing. And so he can be quicker and it's just easier, more comfortable for him. And you feel that pressure to like, ah, get it out there. But yeah. And then he'll, he'll say stuff and we're like, is that true? And he's like, no, I'm just, I'm just, just say messing with you. He's like, no, <laughs> <laughs> but he's very convincing. He very convincing. <laughs> okay. Uh, so in a group or, situation like that understanding that maybe sometimes if you are the person with the undefined throat in the room you might feel that pressure to get your voice out to get attention or you might see that there's someone in your family that you feel like is always the person that you know they always have to have the spotlight or they always you know Mm want to you know, maybe look at their design. Maybe it is a a energetics here. That's, you know, it doesn't mean it answers everything, but there is a possibility there that um, gives you a little insight. mm -hmm, Absolutely. Because I mean, Presley's undefined throat as well. I don't know. Do you think he, I feel like he strikes me as someone that feels pressured to, to speak. What do you think? Do you think he's, he doesn't really speak out of turn either. no, but I'm thinking like our dyna- dynamic mm-hmm. between me and him, he is usually the one that is talking and will like bring forth things that he's learning mm-hmm. or has listened to or read or stuff like that. And I'm just more just kind of there. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, he does have, but like in a group setting. Yeah. But in a group setting where there is like possibility people with defined throats, I don't, I mean like with y'all, I don't think he's like, speaking out of turn he'll contribute what he knows i'll tell you what though yeah if you ask him to speak though you know he can definitely which is great great use of that undefined throat is you know asking him to speak (laughs) and he can be very wise (laughs) you know he can be and i Mm -hmm. think he doesn't waste words you know he doesn't Mm -mm. he does not like to waste time or energy or anything Mm -mm. No. no he gets to the point he gets to the point of things usually Anyways, so which I will tell mm-hmm. you, 
that's not fun when we have an argument because he can get his points out and I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> that can be frustrating. Yeah, it can be a little frustrating. Okay, let's move down to the G center. So this is an important one in relationships for sure because um, this is the center of love and identity and direction. And... Um, there's slightly more people um, that have defined G centers. It's about 57% to 43% undefined. And so it's really one of those areas that it actually can be, um, I don't want to say good, but it can be advantageous, especially in a partnership type relationship where one is undefined and one is defined because the person with the defined G center has a more fixed, um, consistent, uh, sense of their own identity and direction. And Mm -hmm. the undefined G center is someone who is more fluid in their identity. They, they have their own self. It's just that they really kind of when they're around people with other defined with people with defined G centers, they get to kind of dip in and kind of have a flavor of what that person's really like. They can really like kind of see into Mm -hmm. what, how that person identifies themselves. Does that make sense? Now for you, Mm -hmm. you're undefined here and you're a projector. So I feel like you can really kind of get to the heart of, of people and understanding how yeah. they see themselves. I mean, I think so. Cause I feel like when I, I mean, I, when I am around different people, like I'm thinking about like specifically when I'm around Mary Claire versus like y'all, mm-hmm. like very much, they're both very familiar and very close, mm-hmm. but the way that I express myself mm-hmm. between them mm-hmm. can be different. But I, I do feel like I can connect with someone with a defined G on like another level because it is like i i can feel Hmm. how they see themselves and how they feel Hmm. that's so interesting to me um and that's that's what i love about all this is because you can give me that perspective and i can hear it but i really don't know what that's like you know what (laughs) what that means for me because i think the biggest i don't want to say misconception but it's kind of a misconception this whole like fixed identity not fixed identity knowing who you are Mm -hmm. confuses people with a defined g-center i think because you know it's taking me many many years to get a sense of maybe putting a label on it but i like i said i always say i i can tell you who i'm not you know like don't Mm -hmm. don't put that identity on me that's not me (laughs) or you know yes Mm -hmm. I could say I'm someone who you know and that's consistent I could say that who I um am not um I am not a I'm not an overly demonstrative person you know I'm not an attention seeker I am not you know a lot of these things I know that about myself and that's not going to change from one group to another you're not going to put me in another group and suddenly I'm going to be the most uh, like you can't put me in a group of my friends are all now (laughs) circus performers I'm not going to be like ah I feel so comfortable (laughs) you're like nope (laughs) you'll be like no I'm gonna leave (laughs) but maybe someone that undefined G-Center would be like I don't know I might give it a whirl it could be fun maybe I should try this out I might have hidden talents that's that's how I feel more of because I I do struggle a lot of times to kind of understand who I am. Mm -hmm. It's not always like I, it's not something that I can, I can't look at or sit down with someone and tell them who I am or even who I'm not necessarily. Yeah. Cause I, it's very hard for me to pinpoint and understand. Well, there's that idea, the G center played into that. And of course your, your profile and your age and a lot of other things, Mm -hmm. you're not really supposed to have it figured out yet. (laughs) But, you know, you could definitely see that that's going to be part of your path, though, you know, experimenting with that different, you know, not that you're going to become different people, but, you know, like you said, you have friends who you've, you've talked about the, uh, when we talked about the experimenting part of it, you have seen into certain sides of friends that are maybe a little bit more adventurous and outgoing or social, let's say, and you're like, yeah. I could try it. You try it. Mm, it's not really for me kind of thing. Where the undefined G yeah. 
um, runs into trouble is when they try to take that other person's identity as their own. They can sometimes get in a little too deep and they tend to morph into the person and they become more of that person than themselves. And so there is this, there, there is supposed to be a sampling there and a, you know, a feeling of it, but then also, you know, you are a chameleon if you have an undefined G center, but it is also good to spend time alone. So you're not getting lost in that other person. Mm -hmm. So the biggest struggle here in relationships could be, especially in partnership relationships of one or the other is, um, a lot of it would come down to sometimes, uh, uh, societal norms maybe. So like, say, say in the relationship, um, well, like your dad and I, he does not have a defined G center, but I do. So mm -hmm. in the traditional norm, you know, the man is the leader of the family and he sets the tone, you know, mm -hmm. this is, I, I don't agree with this, obviously. <laughs> Mm. I'm just saying there's some gender norms or whatever you want to call it. And a lot of times they, from the outside, people don't like, they, they don't like the, it can be a struggle for the man to, if the woman has a defined G center, not your dad, that she tends to lead more of the direction of the family unit or, you know, something like that. There mm -hmm. could be a conflict if he's concerned about what, you know, is the normal you know, I hate, I want to say mm -hmm. normal quotations here. Yeah. Normal roles. I thought you were going to say something. Mm -hmm. No, I, I was just, you talking about that. I was just thinking how, like, if I were to think back on my childhood, like I do see you as leading the family. Yeah. And it's, you know, I mean, there's the G center for sure, but then there's, you know, my line four and there's other things there that are like, <laughs> I'm providing the stability here. <laughs> <laughs> I am driving this car. I am a steady <laughs> generator. <laughs> driving this car. Yeah, so yeah, so just pay attention to mm -hmm. when those two get in the room and you feel yourself um if you're undefined, you feel yourself maybe being at the effect of someone else's G center just to remember it's just a sampling process of of learning. All right, so this is a very little, very little center on the chart, but it has a lot of impact. It's the will center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, there are way more people with undefined wills than uh, defined wills. I think. Which is probably a good thing. Yeah, the undefined is around 63% and defined is the other. <laughs> 37. The other... <laughs> Do the maths. Yeah. No. <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah. I think. Yeah. So this is the center of um, resources. It's the 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 will center, uh, also called the ego or the heart center, um, and it is a motor center. So there's some energy there, mm -hmm. and it's responsible for bringing things forth in material plane, and so. Okay. There is a lot of here, like I said, it's about material resources, willpower, mm -hmm. and, you know, getting things done, that kind of thing. It's the material world. And so those with mm -hmm. a defined will center are people who have more consistent energy and ac or access to willpower. They, mm -hmm. I mean, these are the people who, mm -hmm. when they say they're going to do something, they most likely are going to they can commit and they can go through it. That's that whole stick to itness. You just got to like, mm -hmm. you know, just got to grind, you got to grind. You've got to, um, just, you know, put your mind to it. You can do it any kind, you know, a lot of mm -hmm. very influential self-help gurus out there. One in particular is Tony Robbins. I'm sure there are others, but that's the one that always sticks out because, you know, it's very easy to give that kind of advice of like, you just have to like, you just have to use your willpower. Just gotta do it. Yeah. And because these are people that have the energy to deliver on the word, whereas the find, um, these are people who struggle with having that access to that, to that willpower. It's inconsistent in them. They might certainly feel it mm -hmm. when they're around others, but when they are, you know, out of that energy field, it's very hard to, access that and so 
the person with the undefined will center has to understand that they're not going to have that consistency. There is no consistent access to willpower. And as such, because of that pressure, they may feel uh, from not just the defined will Mm -hmm. center, but society as a whole to you've to, to commit and to Mm -hmm. do it. Well, you can feel really shitty about yourself If you can't stick to the diet or you can't consistently post uh, social media or you can't get up every day at 5 a.m. to start your new routine, that's going to guarantee your success. You know, it's just like all Mm -hmm. these bullshit things out there of how you have to do it. And I I did a reading once for um, a family and it was very interesting The both the parents had defined will centers and both mm. of their children had undefined centers and will centers. And, you know, it was very mm. important for them to understand that when they're all together in the family, you know, the children may definitely give off the impression that they can do it. They can stick to it. They will agree with you. You know, at school, mm-hmm. these were smaller children because they have that access to that energy and the parents may not understand why it is their child just can't follow through, just can't do it. You know, it's like mm-hmm. at home they do this and they do that. But then when they go to school, it's like they fall apart. Like, what are they doing? You know, these are the dynamics at play there that... Right. They've grown up in an environment of that. And then when they're away from it, it's not there. And it feels very defeating probably a lot of times because you're like, what's wrong with me? Well, there's nothing wrong with you. You know, you're just not Mm -hmm. made to work that way. So as such, another thing that can happen because of that amplification, you know, like I said, those people could the undefined ones could look very willful. They could be the people that's super amped up and they, you know, are really Mm -hmm. gung ho. And there could almost be a little power struggle dynamic there sometimes because they're amplifying that will center energy. And there's this, it, like I said, it is a teeny little center. It only has four gates, but it has such an enormous, it is tiny, enormous (laughs) impact on someone's design, especially if it's undefined because, it is when we talk about the hierarchy of not self behaviors, this holds Mm -hmm. number one because it is the energy to uh, feel like you have to prove something. You're always having to prove yourself because there is that, that, that pressure there that's always there. So, Mm -hmm. you know, looking at those, let's see, you're undefined there. Uh, So, so is Presley. So that's good. (laughs) And your dad and I are both completely open in those areas too. And Ian's, you know, there's not a whole lot of, there's no defined will centers mm-hmm. in our family, but what? this is the first center where I haven't been in the minority. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no. So if you are undefined there, just noticing maybe if you feel yourself, especially when you get into certain environments or in your family, if there is this you feel this need to prove yourself by either um, doing too much or committing to too much. Any behaviors like that, I can certainly understand that. You know, you don't, it's it's funny how sneaky it can be. You don't realize you're doing it a lot of times. You know, it's the whole like Mm -hmm. proving that you're good enough by, I don't know, being the person that always says they're going to host uh, Thanksgiving, even though you don't want to, but you're trying to prove that you're a good person and prove that you can do it. You know, a lot of mm-hmm. those behaviors there. Okay. So <clears throat> I'm moving on. I think I'll save the big one for last. <laughs> big two. All right. So let's jump down now to the uh, spleen, to the spleen center. Okay, so the spleen is your center of instinct, intuition, uh, survival, all of that. And it's also what we don't really lay it out there to say it's also about well-being. But if you think about it, it makes sense. You know, it's like survival. Yeah, your yeah. instincts are like telling you what is healthy for you. And it's kind of what's uh, trying to keep you alive. Kind of, yeah. It's kind of trying to keep you alive. And so when you have a defined uh, spleen center, so this is someone 
who is able to kind of be more like in the now because there is a lot of timing in it because it is about instinct, right? And they're also someone, they tend to have more powerful immune systems. They have a stronger sense of timing. They're consistently using their intuitive powers even if they're not aware of it, their intuitive gifts even if they're not aware Mm -hmm. of it. What's our numbers on defined and undefined? 55% of the population has defined spleen, 45 undefined spleen. And so um, the the spleen being an awareness center, it has a lot of fears associated with it. And because that used to be how Mm -hmm. we survived, right? And so it has creative energy that can be more fear-based to it. And your intuition is always informing you. You have more consistent way of of handling that information. Whereas if the person is undefined, they're definitely uh, a little more fluid, let's say with time, they are more sensitive. They have a more sensitive immune system and they kind of carry this inherent um, feeling of uh, lack of safety. They're kind of fearful because Mm. they don't have this consistent access to I don't know, I liken it to not having these consistent survival instincts of knowing, you know, when to act to kind of, and if they're being affected by the people around them, by the defined spleens in the room, maybe picking up on those person's fears, you know, of what Mm -hmm. is motivating them type of thing. And so, um, you know, all those primal fears that live in the, the splenic center are definitely amplified by the undefined spleen. But so these people that are defined, like I said, they tend to have a better sense of timing and how time works. <laughs> this is the reason mm. I bring this up, because this is where it's most noticeable be- between defined and undefined spleens. One, there's mm-hmm. it's also one of those big attraction points. We talked about the G center because the uh, as far as in like romantic relationships, There's that Mm -hmm. attraction because one has a more solid sense of a direction or identity. And the spleen is the same kind of way. The the defined spleen person feels really good and solid and secure to an undefined spleen Mm -hmm. person. And so what, what happens there in those dynamics is that this is where codependency can show up because, you know, you may logically know that someone's not good for you, but because their energy feels good, familiar, there's something there energetically Mm -hmm. that keeps that person attached to them for too long, longer than what is healthy. Right. So there's an issue Mm -hmm. right there in relationships. If you find yourself in those codependent (laughs) situations, maybe (laughs) examine that, maybe have a look, maybe it's just mechanics happening, you know, that, Mm -hmm. you know, luckily like for you and Presley, you both have defined spleens, but your uh, father, on the other hand, <laughs> has an undefined <laughs> spleen. And 100% mm-hmm. see this playing out in our relationship. Not that it's bad, but I am much mm-hmm. more comfortable on my own. Like, he has an undefined spleen, undefined uh, uh, G-center. And, mm-hmm. like, if I go out of town... <laughs> It's a lot more stressful on him. Not stressed like he can't handle it, but he will be like, Mm -hmm. he doesn't quite feel the same when I'm not around. And I say this because he's told me this, like, he'll be the first one to say Mm -hmm. like, I miss you or, you know, I really miss you. Whereas for me, it's not that I don't love him. It's just, I'm less likely to feel the absence of his, you know, presence energetically because I have my own solid sense there. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. It is interesting in, in me and Presley's relationship, like like you said, we both have defined spleens, but I do find that when he leaves, mm-hmm. I don't feel as safe. Mm. Yeah. Like, I have to walk through the entire apartment. It might also be because I just listen to true crime all the time. Uh, that too. But I, like, I have to check <laughs> oh, and your female. all the nooks and crannies. <laughs> No wonder you don't yeah. feel safe. But I like I check all the closets behind the shower curtain. Like mm-hmm. I gotta check everywhere before I can get in bed and feel safe. Mm-hmm. And then I also find that it takes me longer to fall asleep as well. Like mm-hmm. when he's not there. Hmm. That's interesting, especially with his defined sacral not being in the room anymore. I know. I know. Well, here's the other thing. When I talk about timing, 
because I have an example of this as well, <laughs> is that being more fluid in their timing, you know, you might find that it could be if there's defined and undefined in a relationship, there might be uh, issues and challenges around time and each other's perception of time. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas I'm not always on time, but I, I do tend to have my own sense of time you know, how long it takes maybe mm -hmm. to not always good about how long it takes to do something. But, you know, if, if I have to get somewhere, yeah, you're pretty good. Yeah, at. I can get there, you know, sometimes I don't, but mm -hmm. I know how long it's going to take a lot of times to, to reasonably do things. Whereas mm -hmm. the biggest uh, pet peeve of mine used to be when your dad would tell me he was on his way home and not tell me the three stops he was going to make on his way home before he got home. <laughs> you know, he's like, I'll be home. And like, so now mm -hmm. I've learned to ask him when he says, I'm on my way home. When do you think you'll be here? And he say, well, it shouldn't be that long, maybe an hour. I just have to stop by uh, Lowe's. And then I also have to do X, Y, Z. And I'm like, no, 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 no. That is like, that's minimum, not on your way home. <laughs> minimum an hour and a half to two hours. Like we will <laughs> take your input and we will <laughs> adjust accordingly to what's actually going to happen is you're wrong. So I, I got to feel like on his side of the family, there are not a lot of defi <laughs> defined spleens in there. <laughs> they are rather because fluid in their time, aren't they? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. That is true. Okay. Let's move on to the sacral is a big one because this really, the sacral helps define the types in the mm -hmm. system. And so as we always talk about, there's, you know, 70% or so of the population has defined sacral center because their generators are manifesting generators. Mm -hmm. uh, the other half, the undefined sacral, yep. other half, <laughs> the other portion, <laughs> undefined sacral mm -hmm. centers projectors manifestors reflectors a little over 30 percent so Rough. and so the big one here i know we talk about a lot we should probably be pretty clear at this point maybe maybe not i don't know maybe it's first time maybe it's never listened to this before but sacral center is the life force energy right it's the energy for work mm -hmm. for, for uh it's life force energy. It's the sexual energy. It is like what creates, what keeps moving, building, growing. It is inexhaustible, mm -hmm. always there. It's the base. It's the base. It's the number one motor in the chart. And it's, like I said, it's meant mm -hmm. for building and working and doing. Whereas the undefined sacral center has inconsistent energy access to that they can definitely amplify it and appear to have a lot of sacral mm -hmm. energy mm -hmm. however it's just borrowed just borrowed for sure and so mm -hmm. as you can see you know there's going to be the defined sacral that can you know keep plugging along do the thing they can work all day hopefully they're doing things they want to be doing but chances are mm -hmm. there's a lot of they're not and, you know, there's a lot of energy there. They're meant to use that energy. And the mm -hmm. undefined sacral is someone who's picking up on that energy a lot, amplifying it and reflecting it back. And so they are often, um, if they're not careful, pushing beyond their limits and trying to, to keep up and do. And But they're not designed to do that, right? So what... I mean, what can happen here in a relationship, particularly with a defined and undefined? I'm sure you can enlighten us on this one because you were <laughs> in this situation where it's improving. Mm -hmm. But at the earlier stages mm -hmm. of your relationship, especially living together and everything, and before you have this knowledge, what is the mm -hmm. biggest thing for the undefined sacral? How, how they feel living in a world of sacrals, defined sacrals? What would you say it is? First of all, it can be exhausting. <laughs> like, not not so much in my relationship, but I have found and be, like become more cognizant of it. Like, when I go out in public, I am so drained afterwards. Mm. Like, it is so much. Like, it's just so much energy coming at me that I just feel like. It's like, and when I'm out in public, I can't focus on anything. Mm. It's like, it's just, it's too much. Mm. But like. In, in our, did, me and Preston's relationship, like... Can I ask you, though? Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Was that a new realization or did you never notice that before you had that insight or? I think, I think I always kind of knew it, but I didn't have this lens to look at it through. Mm -hmm. Like I was never one that loved to go out and like go shopping all day because I felt like I, it was so draining Mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. It was like, I didn't want to do that. But I do like, now I can see it's like I come back and I'm like, I'm like cloudy almost. Mm. It's just, it's so much. Mm. Yeah. And then, but in your relationship, mm-hmm. so one thing that non-sacral energy types often say is this, they have this feeling of feeling lazy or being seen as lazy, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Yes. A hundred percent. Cause I feel like, I feel like I should be doing things and then, but I'm like, I don't want to. <laughs> and so as the first, it's not what I want. As we first shared this knowledge with you and Presley, it was pretty Uh, eye-opening in your relationship because it had been a bone of contention Mm -hmm. had it not of him feeling like yeah you weren't doing enough (laughs) Mm -hmm. especially in like the different endeavors we tried like he would always be the driving force of it and then he would get mad at me for not wanting to be a part of it or you know like felt like I wasn't contributing enough Mm -hmm. so it was very eye-opening and helpful for Mm -hmm. him for sure and it did like it made me feel less guilty yeah well because he you know not only to find sacral he has a lot of energy to like do and he has uh, his sun gate is gate of ambition so you know he's like mm-hmm. he's got a lot of that energy whereas yes. you know I, I'll, I'll never forget when I first we fir- I first started introducing this information to the two of you and I really thought he was going to put up a wall and not listen because he seemed so logical to me like he I wouldn't know. but he was so open to hearing about it and Cause he's always looking for ways to improve. <laughs> I think that gets yes, to it. A hundred percent. He's like, I just, he was looking at it in the wrong way. He was like, I just want to know. I'm just trying to figure out how to get Haley to do more. And I'm like, that's not the point. Exactly. <laughs> She's not here no. to do more. <laughs> You're the doer. She's no. not the doer. <laughs> You've got to start looking at ways to encourage the use of her energy that's appropriate for her which for you is about you know managing his energy and helping him Mm -hmm. see how to best use his sacral energy which i think you guys are you know getting there you know of of Mm -hmm. finding that you know balance i see more that you know in his uh social media that he's taking the time to do things himself that you're not going to do you're not going to go run Mm -hmm. it with him I don't think so. No, no. You like to no. exercise. I hate you running. Like getting out there, but you know, mm-hmm. it's not priority. So, well, that's like, I was going to say, so last night I've, we had like a little date where we sat and we painted pumpkins mm-hmm. and I really, he, he didn't want to do it. He's like, this is, he's like the activity that you probably love the most is the thing that I hate the most. He's like, I hate painting. And I was like, well, make an effort and have like, have fun with it. And so he did. He painted a pumpkin mm. and it took him a lot less time to do what he painted than what I painted. So after he got done painting, he started to sketch on his iPad. So it was like, he, I was like, well, we can still do something. And I'm like, you're a creative person. You just don't ever do anything. So he did like, he sketched an elk and it was very good. But I was like, see, you can do things mm-hmm. that are different that help you, mm-hmm. but you don't have to be doing exactly. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Nice little story. Nice little story. That sounded very condescending. I didn't mean it. I know. After I got done with it, I was like, I don't think that tied so much, but I apparently wanted to share it. I'll listen back in editing because I can't believe how long this episode is. I'm like, oh, God. Nobody's going to want to listen to this. Um, Okay. So really, the situation here is noticing in the undefined sacral If that's you, are you feeling this amplification energy, which is good. It doesn't mean that you have to ignore it or try to get rid of it. Use it, but notice, you know, especially if you're undefined sacral, any group you're in, you're going to get to this point where you may feel your energy lagging and you don't want it Mm -hmm. to because everybody else seems to still have a lot of energy going. And so it's like a, a push through kind of thing. And to just start to notice when your energy levels start to, because I, I, I mean, from what I understand, what I've talked to projectors, they know 
they know when they're getting to that point where they they just start to push through because like you said you're exhausted or whatever you don't want to do it and Mm -hmm. that making yourself push (laughs) through is not a good thing yeah no no when when i push through my energy if i i turn into a bitch get a little bitter you guys saw that it's not pretty it's very Mm -hmm. i get very mean and i'm just i because i'm just so over it at that point i'm just so tired Mm -hmm. and i'm so done with everything that i like i take it out on other people it's not fair but that's just you know what you i'm trying to bring up a good point because i was i was as i was just explaining that i was realizing i was putting the uh, responsibility on the non-sacral but also for the defined sacral if you know this about the person in your life or people in your life who do have undefined sacral centers, you're going to notice probably before they will. I should have said this first. You probably. And you do. Yeah, I you do, do now. <laughs> you specifically. Yeah. <laughs> you can start to pay attention and notice when your non-sacral child or spouse or whatever boss is <laughs> past that point and needs to just mm-hmm. shut it down. And I, and you can give them permission to do that. I've done that for you before. Now Mm -hmm. that I know this, I can say Mm -hmm. you're done, aren't you? Because you won't admit it at first. You don't always see it first. You won't admit it first. I see it. And I say, Haley, you're done for today, aren't you? And you're like, yes. And you just kind of (laughs) like, Like, we'll be playing a game and you're just like, I can see where the game stops being fun for you. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> there's a moment and you're the one that wanted to play the game and you're the most excited to play the game and you everybody gets in it everybody's really doing it and then you just see Haley just starts to her face just starts to like <laughs> flat line yeah, yeah my face also gives yeah. it away <laughs> it's true okay moving on uh just pay attention to each other the root yes. center this one is no, it's the center of adrenalized energy. It's that pulse of energy uh, that is needed to get things started, get things going. Um, if you have it defined, you're more comfortable in knowing like when you're going to have access to that energy. Like if you, if you're defined, you are not feeling the pressure that an undefined root center feels because this is one of those pressure centers because it's that pressure to do, to act, to move. And so if it's defined, you tend to be a little more relaxed in the process. You know when you're going to have energy. Not like you know when you're going to have energy. You can feel when you have the energy for something and when you don't. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Because you don't really know Mm -hmm. when it's going to happen. But you have a more clear understanding of when the time is to act and to get into motion. And when it's time to just kind Mm -hmm. of not, you know. And if you're undefined, you feel that pressure all the time, that adrenalized pressure to, to get things done. And so you do tend to do the work and keep doing the work and piling people pile more work on you because, well, you can just get it done because you're trying to get rid of that pressure is the whole thing of the trying Mm -hmm. to get rid of the pressure of, of feeling the definition around you. And so. So 60% of the population has defined root, 40% is undefined. Hmm. And so <laughs> you can kind of see it. These are the ones that the, the people at work that they just pile more work on, whether they're sacral or non-sacral. They're just the people that are trying to get rid of this pressure. So they will do things quickly, get it done so they can move on the next thing. But there's never any, there's no done. There's no getting away from it because there's always the pressure there. As soon mm-hmm. as you finish one thing, if you have an undefined sacral, I mean, uh, root, you're, you know, in the presence of that energy in any way, there's always going to be something else that you're going to feel like has to be done. And so when the defined and the undefined <clears throat> come together like that, like I said, the the root, the undefined root is feeling a tremendous amount of pressure to, to do things, to, to act, to get done. So when, if you were like in a relationship with people who, uh, in your environment, say you're the one with the undefined root center, you may feel Mm -hmm. that the people in your life are always putting pressure on you. Um, those with defined root centers that they are, they're putting you under pressure simply 
by walking in the room, you might feel pressured by someone Mm -hmm. and it can feel uncomfortable. And if you don't know the, the energetics that's going on, it can turn you, you know, make you start to feel a little resentful or, um, really is resentful the right word? Resentful. Yeah. Resentful. I feel like I could cause a little like anxiety as well. Mm -hmm. Especially you could feel like, there's certain expectations in the relationship that aren't necessarily there. You're just feeling pressure. And like I said, none of this is like cognizant. It's not like, you know, it's all energetic. So it's not, it's I'm sprinkling my fingers. It's nebulous. It's not <laughs> uh, conscious awareness. It's something that you're feeling. And there may be a reactionary quality to that, that you feel someone's always putting you under pressure. And then the other person doesn't understand what the fuck you're talking about because they're like, what do you mean? I just said, you know, we should. Uh, you're like, I just walked in the room. What do you mean? <laughs> or be like, oh, you know, we should. We need to paint this room. I was like, Peter, we, should, we, we need to clean out the closets or something like that. Right. We need to paint this room. You know, that's just a statement of like, hey, defined roots mm-hmm. like. Hey, it just needs to be done. It feels like the right time. We can do this. We can do this now. I I think there's the energy for it. Whereas Mm -hmm. the other person could take it personally like, oh, what do you mean? You know, clean out the closets. What are you saying? Am I messy? Oh, you know, they make all these stories about it. And then fine, let's just get it done, you know, and just get rushed through it. And there's a whole lot of, instead of cooperation in the effort, there's a lot more of like Mm -hmm. angst and anxiety, like you said, of just like, Oh, this person's putting me under so much pressure. I hate it. I just want to be done with it, you know. So you might feel those dynamics mm-hmm. in your relationships. Okay, lastly, this I think is the big one. <laughs> Some people may disagree with me. When you <laughs> when you said earlier, you said, I'm going to save the big one for last. And I was trying to figure out. I thought maybe it was the root because it has a lot of gates, mm-hmm. but no. Well, the throat has the most gates. But the emotional solar plexus, I think, has some of the biggest impact that in the sacral i guess but in the in the whole chart and in energy dynamics because Mm -hmm. as it states it's emotional solar plexus this is the center for emotional awareness it's a it's Mm -hmm. a center for creativity emotions and it's not necessarily feelings but it is emotions in the sense of where your where your mood is where your energy level is if you have a defined emotional center it's 50 50 here on this one and if you are defined mm-hmm. emotionally you're someone who is more comfortable with their emotions and if you are defined it means you have an emotional wave it operates you know your energy it's a motor that that energy center and so it does operate in a different types of waves you know your emotions can go up and down Mm -hmm. you can have spikes and valleys and you know all these things right but right you are tend to be a little more comfortable with your emotional nature and if you are undefined there as you said you're you're taking in amplifying reflecting it back These are people who feel those emotions so much more intensely. And so when emotional and and, and emotionally defined and undefined people come together, a lot of times the undefined emotional person appears to be the more quote unquote emotional person or their emotions Mm -hmm. seem all over the place or they're seen as more dramatic, you know, they are the ones that are super sensitive, Mm -hmm. you know, all of these things. And especially this dynamic can be tricky between parents and children, because if the parents, let's say, are uh, emotionally defined and their children are undefined, they may not realize that their children are actually expressing their emotions, their parents' emotions, the intensity of it, let's say. Mm-hmm. Let's be clear, though. I always want to make sure I say this. Emotionally undefined people have their own emotions and they have their own emotional mm-hmm. world and state. They feel things. They understand it, but they also feel other people's emotions. And that's where it gets cloudy because... Um, Mm -hmm. it's, you know, for me, like I always say, being defined, I can wake up one day and be just down in the dumps and I can just kind of be moody and just be that way. Right. Whereas 
undefined, mm-hmm. such as yourself, you know, could walk into that mm-hmm. situation that day and wonder, oh my gosh, maybe you're feeling it more intensely, or you might think it's way worse than it is, and you might try to make mm-hmm. me feel better, or maybe it's the kind of person emotionally undefined that just can't even deal with it. It's too much, and they just leave. You know, it's because they don't want to be around because mm-hmm. that's what happens generally. Undefined, emotionally, people either fall into the trap of people pleasing or complete emotional mm-hmm. shutdown because it's just uncomfortable, mm-hmm. right? doesn't right. mean it's mm-hmm. you're just one or the other that's just what can happen likewise i see this a right. lot uh, parents who are undefined emotionally with emotionally defined children that can be a tricky dynamic too because as a parent you're super hypersensitive to your children anyhow you 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 know Mm-hmm. Even in parenting, you want to do the right thing, but you're always worried about how they're feeling and what they're doing. I can only imagine if you are undefined and your child is defined, the amount of like probably pleasing behavior that goes on where the parent is just, this is what I see it as like, is the mother who is overly clingy to her children in the sense of, tiptoeing around her children and hoping she doesn't upset them and you know oh there's you know Mm -hmm. they are so this it's because they don't understand their own emotional nature is just like amplifying everything that child's feeling so it feels way worse Mm -hmm. than it actually is to the child so I always say if you if you're in that situation if you're if your child tells you I'm fine you know no realistically you know I'm not you know I don't want to go into every scenario but nine times out of 10, they are okay. And just, you know, let them be, keep an eye on them from a distance, make sure they're not, you know, really upset. But, you know, you, you as the mm-hmm. undefined emotional person can tend to maybe, well, amplify, amplify it. <laughs> Thank you. It's a saint. <laughs> And so I I say this is the big one because I think this is where a lot of people get off track is because it is dealing with how we feel so much and it can be, it's weird how it's like almost the opposite of what it should be. You would think emotionally defined person would be more like the emotional one, but it's actually the opposite. Mm -hmm. So that's certainly something to to pay attention to. So just in the family, chances are there's going to be a little little mix there. Our family, um, you're the emotionally undefined one, and we are all emotionally defined. So I'm just you're here to teach I'm us. I'm the odd so one much. out in this family. You're not the odd one out. You're the wise one in. It's, no, <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Presley isn't emotionally defined either. Right? No, no, or is he? I can never. No, remember. he's not. No. Which is good. Which they say that a lot of times if there are two emotionally undefined people in a relationship such as yourself, uh, to pay attention to Mm -hmm. really when you do have disagreements or feel more emotionally charged to notice either if you've been around other people or if you're talking about other people's issues can tend to emotionally Mm -hmm. charge the room more than when it's just just the two of you. You know, because a lot of times they say that two emotionally undefined people are usually arguing about other people's <laughs> issues and not their own. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 I mean, like... Or we're arguing about stupid shit. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's just... I think that's just couplehood. You tend to... If we're not... Honestly, if we're not paying attention, we're all going to argue over stupid shit because we're just not paying attention to what's <laughs> really going on. But it is interesting to, I think, is one of the first places to look if there is things going on in a relationship dynamic or something like that, is to look at the emotional definition, um, first and foremost, I think, because it can give you a lot of a lot mm-hmm. of clues as to what people are actually experiencing. So anyways, that's just, mm-hmm. I know it went on a little bit long, but there are nine centers. <laughs> There is a lot to talk about. There. I hmm? don't feel like it was a long, drawn-out thing. I think it was very nice. Oh, well, thank you. You're you're the wise one in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you do- see that's an expensive thing to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, good callback. That was a great callback there. <laughs> Way back to the game. <clears throat> so anyways, you know, my sweater is very fitting. Mm-hmm. My, f- my sweater is very fitting for how we were talking about our family dynamics. Oh, you love I am the, the black sheep in it. <laughs> well, in the not bad way. Yeah, yeah. You're the odd one out. In the not bad way. In the good way. Well, it's actually quite perfect. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it is quite perfect because, you know, we talk about the the dynamics of the and the roles of the projector, you know, that they're here to mm-hmm. <clears throat> help guide, you know, certain generator types. You know, you're not for everyone. You've got to wait for the invitation, the mm-hmm. correct invitation. And so it is kind of fitting in that way that the rest of us are generator types in the family and you're the projector and you do kind of you are Me. part of that uh, we we do all look to you a lot of times for that uh guidance okay so with all that said we've gone through the centers hopefully that'll give some insight as you move into this season of holiday gatherings still plenty of time we still got october we still have some fun mm-hmm. to be had before we all dig it <laughs> the family dynamics but uh that brings us to the end Mm -hmm. of the show which brings us to what Haley? the incarnation cross of the week (laughs) (laughs) so (laughs) so bad (laughs) so this week's cross is the left angle cross of the clarion Mm -hmm. of clarion the clarion and oh. so that means it's a line five or a line. That five. means. Yes. Six. <laughs> the transpersonal cross. You didn't let me shine. <laughs> it's a transpersonal cross. I, I still have to do the whole thing like in my head, just like to say your ABCs. But when I say right angle or left angle, I have to literally like put it up in my brain and say, okay, left angle is actually the opposite. It's over here (laughs) where I'm reading. I read from left to right, you know, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Mm. And then right angle is actually the opposite. It's the earlier one, two, three. Mm -hmm. I know. I see things that way. I don't know if you do, but I do. Okay. I mean, I I do also have to say it's on the right uh, side of the, Hexagram. Yeah. Oh, it's not really a hexagram. It's not on the side of the hexagram. Anyways, we digress. So the left angle cross of the clarion consists of the gates mm-hmm. 51 in the sun and 57 in the earth on the personality side on and then are on the conscious side. And on the unconscious side, the design side, it's the uh, gate 61 in the sun and gate 62 in the earth. And so those are the gates of 51 is shock. <laughs> 57 is intuitive insight, 61 is mystery, and 62 is detail. Those are the keynotes for this. So here's a little synopsis to share. Okay. So if this is your cross, your mission is to be a vocal catalyst, continuously sharing your voice and insights to surprise and inspire those awaiting transformation beyond their comfort zones. You lead, teach, and motivate Mm -hmm. others by introducing them to profound spiritual truths, guiding them to discover practical means of aligning with their higher purpose. Your unique perspective, excuse me, your unique perspective encompasses the expansive cosmic and spiritual view of life, which you can share in practical and impactful ways. As a practical mystic, you utilize your keen intuitive awareness to initiate others into their higher purpose and the broader meaning of their existence. You are a spiritual teacher and initiator, helping individuals decipher the significance of their challenges and reconnect them with their spiritual mission. You shed a light on the path of self-discovery and spiritual realization for those you come in contact with, inspiring them to live in alignment with their own true calling. Dun, dun, dun. I like yeah. it. Cool. I like it. They're always so good. So good. Well, I don't know what that word means. What word? 
clarion clarion oh, clarion is literally that yes. it's like a clarion call is like the person that shares the message really the clarion that's how i see it okay i i'm i'm thinking about what i was just reading today i was reading stuff from Ra Uruhu and he was underneath that cross and are born in that cross not underneath that cross and he would all he would just oh. say i'm just a clarion i'm just here to toot my own horn i just toot the horn i just you know i'm not here to do anything other than to spread the message kind of thing so it's kind of what okay. it is yeah. anyways so okay. that brings us to the end good. today and it's been fun as always hanging out with you and yes. hearing from you and Thank you, everyone out there, for listening to us today and all of our musings. Yes. <laughs> we appreciate you. And we look forward to having you all back next time. So, bye. <laughs> now, bye. Well, you made it all the way to the end of today's episode, so you must have liked what you heard. If you did, make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode and perhaps leave us a good review. And if you know someone who wants to dig into all things human design with us, make sure you share the Human Design Hive podcast with them. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks for listening.